restricting the use of a particular COVID treatment due to a more contagious subvariant. The Food and Drug Administration says that the monoclonal antibody treatment called sotravimab has been successful keeping people out of the hospital, but it does not seem to help people who contracted the Omicron subvariant known as BA2. Now, the FDA says that BA2 is now the dominant strain in at least eight states two territories, and it's rising elsewhere. It's also driving a surge in cases in parts of Europe, particularly the UK, Germany, and the Netherlands. And joining us now is Anne Ramoyne. She is a professor in the epidemiology department at the UCLA Fielding School of Public Health, and she joins us now live from Los Angeles. Professor, thank you for joining us. Let's talk about BA2 and what we know about the new Omicron subvariant. It's apparently more transmissible than BA1, but does it cause more severe illness? Well, thanks for having me, Christy. And this is a good question. So BA2 is uh, appears to be more trans transmissible, maybe even 50 to 60 percent more transmissible, but it does not appear to cause more severe disease. So that's good news. Very good news. And look, we know that cases caused by BA2 remain relatively high um, relatively speaking, across Asia. There's also this new wave of BA2 infections happening across Europe. And we're starting to see a rise in BA2 cases in the U.S. Um, is this going to be another surge in the U.S.? Well, we don't really know. What we're starting to see here uh, in the United States and in, in northern uh, North, in North America in general is an uptick in wastewater surveillance. So we're starting to detect it in, in greater and greater quantities here. It's now becoming the dominant variant here. We've started to see in New York City, for example, an uptick in cases and in certain parts of the United States. But it's really unclear what kind of an increase we're going to see. Are we going to see a surge as we saw before? Are we just going to see a smaller wave? It really depends uh, upon the, the kind of immunity that we have here. Uh, and but, but interestingly, what we're seeing in the UK where they did also have a very large Omicron surge, you know, they do have a, a very high rate of cases. Hospitalizations are starting to increase there as well. So we need to be watching these indicators very closely and be ready to act if we start to see a, a large increase. Yeah, and that action could also take the form of an additional booster shots. You know, in the U.S., um, the FDA set to approve additional booster shots for adults over the age of 50 next week. Um, I'm already boosted here in Hong Kong. My folks in America already boosted. But will we all need another booster shot? Well, sooner or later, we're all going to need another booster shot. I, I think it's it's pretty clear that the that the immunity uh, that we get from from the vaccine in terms of preventing infection uh, is is waning. Although it is still doing a good job at preventing severe disease, hospitalization, and death in most people. Now, uh, immunocompromised people need to be very vigilant about getting these doses as they are recommended. But we're still looking at the data and trying to understand how important is this next dose. Um, when does it need to happen, and what kind of long-term benefit are we going to see? So, so we're still looking at the data, but it's great that these doses are going to be available. I think that that is a very prudent thing to do, given that even if BA2, this uh, Omicron subvariant, doesn't create a very large wave, this virus is going to continue to spread. When it spreads, it has opportunity to mutate, and we need to be ready for the next surge. Yeah, and as the virus continues to evolve, continues to mutate, and perhaps additional subvariants could emerge, are we seeing a scenario that we're going to have to take booster shots the same way we take a flu shot every season? I think it's very reasonable to expect that we'll need to have a regular a, a regular shot, like a flu shot. Uh, and likely we're going to start to see these vaccines updated on an annual basis based on what we see circulating. You know, so I think... You know, right now we're seeing this, uh, the vaccines prevent these most severe outcomes, but we really don't know how long that's going to hold out. And we don't know what variant is going to arise that really could evade the immune response that has been elicited by these vaccines to keep people out of the hospital and from dying. So we're going to have to watch it very closely and be ready to act. And everybody should anticipate sooner or later we'll need another dose. And I got to ask you about um, the risk of reinfection. You know, what if someone contracted a, a previous variant? Could they become reinfected with BA2? Absolutely. Uh, we've seen people who have been 
uh, who've been infected with previous variants uh, get reinfected with the Omicron variant. We've seen people who have been fully vaccinated and boosted get infected with the Omicron variant. The big question is, is if you've had Omicron, will you get reinfected with this BA2 subvariant? And uh, the answer is, is it's possible. A Danish study recently in, in, in preprint, not yet peer reviewed, has suggested that uh, you can get reinfected from BA1 to BA2. Those though, those though, those reinfections are rare. All right, Professor Anne Ramon, we'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for lending your expertise to our audience. Take care. My pleasure.